Hello and welcome to DuPont presents the power of Shunya challenge for zero. Now zero signifies nothing to a lot of you. But here on our show, for us, it signifies everything. That's right. We aim to chase Shunya and to get to Shunya. Shunya of all that is wrong, the things that are around us. How will we get that? Well, we've got 16 pairs of young minds, innovative minds, who are going to help us achieve that Shunya. 16 teams, that's right out of which the top two on our leaderboard at the end of the series will compete in the grand finale. What are they competing for? Well, there's big prizes. There's that gift check of rupees 10 lakhs and of course, more importantly, that all expense paid trip to the DuPont headquarters in the United States. And that's something that money can't buy. Tell you what else money can't buy? Our judges. Our first judge is the Regional Technology Director, Asia Pacific of DuPont, Dr. Homi Vadwar. Hi, Homi, how are you? I am very well, thank you. We also have the CMD of Karma Venture Services, uh, Ms. Nandini Vaidyanathan. Hi, Nandini, how are you? I am good. We also have uh, the founder and CEO of Milagro Business and Knowledge Solutions, Mr. Rajiv Karwal. Hi, Rajiv, how are you? I'm fine. What about you? Very well, thank you. So, let's not waste any time. Let's introduce our first team. Our first team comprises Sanket Panchal from the Parul Institute of Engineering and Technology, Baroda, and Sabya Sachi Bhattacharya from the Mudra Institute of Communications in Ahmedabad. Please welcome them. <laughs> Sanket and Sabya Sachi, how are you? Fine, Good. sir. All right, so what you guys are going to be talking about is the paddy transplanter. That's what you're going to present to us. Uh, let's just show you this little clip to familiarize you with what exactly they will be presenting today. I am Sanket Panchal. I am completed my Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering from Parul Institute in Vagodia in Vadodara. And I developed the manual paddy transplanter machine. I want to help my Indian farmers, so I developed the machine by my innovative ideas. A good friend of mine belongs to family of farmers, so during the vacation time I visited his farm and I saw that the, how tough it is for the farmers to plant the crops uh, while bending, they having a lower back problems, so I decided that the, I invent this machine for them. Traditionally transplanting is done manually by labor, this method has some drawbacks, laborers having a health problems and this method transplanting is not uniform which affect on the plant growth. My paddy transplanter overcome this problem, the transplanting is easiest and uniform, uh, it also eases the health problems of the farmer and only one person is required to run this machine for transplanting so which is re reduced the labor cost. The crank rod moves the transplanter in a vertical linear motion. The fox plugs the crops from the grass tray and transplant it in the paddy puddle. There are some major advantage of my transplanter. It is very cost effective. The Chinese transplanter machine cost around 3 to 5 lakhs. Uh, my transplanter cost is Rs. 16,800 which is a 20 times cheaper than the Chinese machines. There is also one health advantage. The workers do not have to crouch for a long period of time during using my machine. So the back problems of the workers are also solved. My innovation is trying to achieve Shunya by reducing the health problem of the farmers and by reducing the expenditure cost on the labor. Well, okay, tell us more about that. Of course, we have Sabya Sachi. Now, Sabya Sachi, we've given you 90 seconds. We've heard a few numbers right now, but we want you to elaborate on them. Tell us more about the plan. The judges are all ears. You have 90 seconds for your pitch. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, your time starts now. Thanks, Gaurav. So, in our secondary research, we found out that around 60 million paddy farmers are present in India who have less than two hectares of land with them. Now, these are small scale farmers. They don't have the capacity to buy automation as such. So, our idea is to take this machine, which we call Sarathi, to them, to help them, to empower them and make them believe that automation and innovation is only for their benefit and not to rob them off. So our idea is to bring this machine to them at the lowest cost possible. Now how we do that is by following a lease mechanism. What we say to the farmers is, you don't have to pay any money to me upfront. You just take this machine for lease. 
and you are paying me very less amount of money per month system. Now, even to further reduce the economic burden, what we have planned is we will tie up with NGOs so that they can help us form self-help group of farmers. So that not one farmer but four or five farmers together are buying this machine. So the per head cost reduces even more. Secondly, we would like to develop what we say as the uh, Saral Sahyogi Dal for this. Now, this Saral Sahyogi Dal would be the, uh, comprising of the youth and the women who will be recruited from within rural India. And what they would do is, they would do the maintenance, they would also help us with the word of mouth promotion of this machine, which is a very effective way of promoting anything in rural India today. Excellent. And now I'm going to leave it to our judges to quiz them on the science behind the rice and behind the price. <laughs> Homi? Uh, tell me a little bit about how you uh, got the concept of this uh, machine. You know, uh, simple things are usually the best inventions at the yeah. end of the day. So how did you get this idea of doing exactly what this machine does? Did you look at other um, uh, prototypes or how yeah. did it work? So I see the China's machine and Japan's machine. So they having a, first they, they require the diesel engine and also. So and they having a, many automatic automatic machine plants. They, they are looking like the, this. So they, when they are plicking that, there is a only a V type of crops. So when the crops are in the fitting in this, sometimes the crops are damages. So I suggest that the, I have a such type of mechanism, my roller follow mechanism. So the crops are also not damaged and it will be going in deeply insertion in the puddle field. So that will be the best thing about this. That's great. And when you arrived at the costing, uh, how did you go about that costing? Is it uh, based on some mass buying or uh, how, how have you arrived at the prices? So d during the fabrication of this job, uh, I say I, the many people are uh, around my family members, they are suggesting that the, if you are doing the lathe machine and drilling machine works, if you're doing then automatic machine, CNC machine and laser laser cutting machine, the pride will be in the production that will be very lower. So I doing the all works on very precisely on the laser machines, on the CNC lathe machine. Mm -hmm. How many, uh, has this particular prototype done a few hours in the field of actual work? Yeah, actually we had another model where, which was field tested by the National Innovation Foundation. So when they tested it, that thing was wo uh, working and it had a, a successful uh, run. But, so we built another prototype for this purpose also. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, in your presentation on the video, you said this machine reduces back pain, eases back pain, and does not require so many people. Does it also improve productivity of the farmer? Yeah, sure. Why didn't you mention that? Isn't that very important? Because the problem with Indian agriculture today yeah. is low productivity. Yes. And if your machine can actually improve the farmer's productivity, you ought to be highlighting that, right? Yeah, sure. Yes, ma'am. So, how are you planning to market this now? What's the game plan here? So, uh, ma'am, uh, the uh, first idea is that to reach to the rural India, what we thought is the best is to pick up people from within themselves, them, and to train them so that they can be the people who are communicating directly, and that is the most effective way. Correct. That is why we thought of deciding the Saral Sayogi Dal workforce. So what they will do is, and we also thought that this workforce would Have be... Have you identified which are the states you will address first? Yes, ma'am. So our uh, uh, launch phase would be in two parts. The first phase would be in the areas of uh, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Punjab and UP. And the second phase would be followed by West Bengal, Odisha and Tamil Nadu. Now why we divided... In these states, how many farmers would you have covered in your catchment area? So, ma'am, uh, like around, we have found that around it would be two to three million farmers who would be coming together. And uh, within that, we had made an estimate that even if 10% of them or even if 15 to 20% of them are buying, that also is a big substantial amount of farmers we are looking at. So that we can have a launch and once that is done, so they will, the word of mouth will follow and then they would act as the our second uh, point of contact for other farmers to look into as well. Uh, you're sitting on a gold mine because hardly any technology deployment happens in agriculture. Yeah. So I think you should go for it. So those are the words of wisdom. I really think that's very important. Yeah. See, see, 
invention has to go with the commercializability. Yeah. You have to be able to market the invention. Yeah. So please keep that in mind and I think sure. that will be very successful. Okay, thank you so much for that. Quick price, low price, nice or not nice? Our judges will decide. I'm going to let them deliberate for a while. Five parameters is what our team is going to be marked on. Disruption, relevance, the reach and commercial viability of the innovation, the use of science in the actual development uh, of the innovation and most importantly, the Shunya proposition. Judges, please let us know how you mark them. I gave overall marks of 68, which is one of the top marks I've given so far That is here. true. He's not very liberal with them, uh, huh? so well done. And I used the word use of science in a broad sense because it is a very engineering-oriented uh, uh, innovation. So I gave that uh, uh, high marks for that. Uh, and uh, uh, I gave high marks for relevance as well. So. Uh, overall 68. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 72. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. That's the highest 72. I've given. Um, and I think you guys scored in terms of relevance because you're fixing a problem. There's nothing esoteric about it. Reach and commercial viability is, you know, absolutely phenomenal. And therefore, to my mind, the Shunya quotient is high. Now remember, if Rajiv marks them over 60, that means they're in play for that grand finale. How do you think you've done? Think you've got it? Yeah, hope so. You think you've done better than 60? Hope so. He's, uh, he's not very easy with the marks, I'll tell you that. Well, let's just cut the suspense, Rajiv. <laughs> is it over 60 or not? You know, I'll... Not at all. I think I'll break, break their hearts, but uh, the idea is that uh, I want to push you harder. Uh, when I listen to you, uh, you know, talking about the problem, how you observed it and how you wanted to solve it, and when I see that you are still at the prototype stage after being in NIF for long, I'm not happy at all. And uh, I would have liked the machine to be performing in the field with a lot of orders and things like that. And that is how you scale up. So that is reflecting in the marks which I gave. So, so. I'm going to quibble a little bit here, uh, Rajiv. You know, you can see it's not a sophisticated machine, right? So I, I'm okay with that. I think what they're trying to do is is really address an issue uh, address a problem that exists and and it is backbreaking for farmers to kind of do this work so it is a simple machine i'm sure over time they will put bells and whistles on it and so on and it'll improve i know my scores are final this is it <laughs> and what are they uh, 48 out of 100 48 missed by 12 188 but good score anyway well done let's give them a round of applause On that note, we're going to take a short break. We have another team that's going to come and present the innovation, but that will happen after a few moments. Stay tuned to DuPont Presents The Power of Shunya. Challenge for Zero. We'll be right back. Good job, guys. Hello and welcome, you're watching DuPont Presents The Power of Shunya Challenge for Zero. This is season two and we have 16 teams of innovators who are coming and presenting ideas here. Ideas with the Shunya question, that's what we're looking for. We've already heard from the first team today. Let's call out our second team and see what they are going to wow us and dazzle us with. Please welcome from the Indian Institute of Technology, Mumbai, Vikas Karade and from the National Institute of Industrial Engineering, also Mumbai, Umang Gajja. Gentlemen, how are you? Fine. Fine. I do want to tell you that finally it's time for some science fiction on our show, right? Because you guys are talking about X-ray to 3D. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just get excited for a second because I'm visualizing all these robots fighting with each other. That's not <laughs> what's happening, right? No. Way to shatter a boy's dreams. 
Let's have a look at what they are talking about indeed. Innovation which I am presenting is X-ray to 3D. It's a web-based software which can convert a two-dimensional X-ray image, a digital image, into a three-dimensional model, which can be used for various applications like surgery planning. When I was a BTEC at IIT Bombay, I was working in a project which was related to medical instrumentation design. That is more of mechanical, but uses medical knowledge. And that time, Dr. Manish Agrawal, he used to sort of guide me or give me feedback. And that time he mentioned a very important problem of getting a 3D model from two-dimensional X-ray. That time I ignored it because uh, it's, it's mathematically impossible. But when I came as a PhD, I wanted a different flavor of research. So I tried computer programming and stuff. I got into computer programming and algorithms. And there I re-looked that problem because it is very exciting and it is, it is a world-class problem. I mean, uh, everybody in the world is excited about this problem. So I thought, let's take it as a challenge. Getting a 3D model from two-dimensional image, that is mathematically not possible uh, if, you, if you are using only the information from this two-dimensional image. But if you look at a surgeon, an experienced surgeon, when he look at a normal 2D X-ray, he can imagine it in 3D because of his experience. He has seen so many bones, he has seen many X-rays of the bones, so he knows the correlation and that learning, that intelligence he has. I am using the same concept for machines. The same intelligence or machine learning, that learning you have to give to machine and machine can predict from two dimension image that how the 3D model will look like. Other than surgical planning, which is an immediate application, there are many futuristic applications. For example, uh, in future, robotic surgery will come up. A robot will directly perform the surgery on patient, which is not happening right now. For that, even then, you will have to train a robot on the basis of 3D models. And this software can give you 3D model in low cost and low time and no health risk. There are other applications like you can design implants much better using a 3D model. You can use it in teleradiology concept as well. In fact, we are trying to implement to one of the teleradiology applications. We are implementing this software. Vikas has taught us that it indeed is true that never judge a book by its cover. He may look younger than his years, but he talks with wisdom far beyond them. So good job, Vikas. I know that Homi is waiting to quiz you about it. So I'm going to quickly jump to uh, Umang. Umang, you have to give us the business presentation of this, some of the numbers, future plans. You have 90 seconds to do that. I know it's a tough task, but I'm sure you're up for it. Are you ready? Okay, buddy. So your 90 seconds start now. X-ray to 3D has many applications, but right now we are currently focused on knee arthritis, uh, pre-operative surgery planning. It is because of the large volume of uh, surgeries that perform uh, our knee arthritis as compared to other surgeries. Now, X-ray to 3D has many interactive and collaborative features. So this will help in increasing the operational efficiency of our target segment, who is hospitals and orthopedic surgeons. It will also help us in reducing the cost of the surgery that will be beneficial to the patients. Now, if we look at the global trends, then 63% of the surgeries performed in the uh, world are done in US. So our long-term strategy is to uh, take our software into the global level, but uh, at the same time, we will be first uh, focusing on uh, uh, creating a strong footprint into the Indian markets. Now, we have segmented the Indian markets based on geography into urban, semi-urban, and rural areas, and based on type of services offered by hospitals into uh, general healthcare hospitals and orthopedic hospitals. In India, there are 15,000 general healthcare hospitals and orthopedic hospitals who could be our target customers. Now, to attract this uh, target customers, we have already launched an online demonstration version of our software, and we have got very good response from all over the world. We are also uh, planning to launch a 2D planning software for uh, word of mouth uh, promotion of our software. And the final version of our software will be available with three different types of subscription, with varying the, uh, with the, with, uh, varying the target segment and with the varying prices. Thank you. Our judges are going to look at your plan. They're going to take a little x-ray of it. And they're going to tell us whether this plan is 2D or indeed 3D. Judges, over to you. So Vikas, uh, you, you take some pictures of, of, let's say, a bone or whatever it is, and, and there are parts that are hidden in, a, in an x-ray. Yeah. How does the model or the algorithm predict, or can it predict, what's not seen? Yeah, so of course the part of interest which you really want in 3D, that must be seen in that x-ray. 
Now for knee joint bones, fortunately, most of the uh, parts are visible from the front x-ray and the side x-ray. So you don't need any more x-ray than that. And this is uh, 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 true with all other long bones uh, of the body for which the uh, surgeries are mostly done. For example, knee or hip or, or shoulder or elbow. So you really don't need more than two X's, one from front and one from the side. Very good. Does it improve the operational efficiency of the surgeon? And if so, to what extent? Yes, so uh, what happens is, if, a, if, if any process, if you plan something, any process in, 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 uh, before the process, then you can perform the process more accurately. So right now the planning is done on the basis of two-dimensional image. Any surgical planning is done based on two-dimensional image. But if you have a three-dimensional visualization, it improves. And it has been researched already that uh, most of the decisions which are taken right now using two-dimensional two images, only 12% of those decisions are actually happening in, in the surgery. But when you use 3D, 96% of the decisions are accurate. You can rely on decisions made on the basis of 3D visualization. So what's your monetization model here? Basically, there will be three uh, types of uh, subscriptions. The first one would be the basic subscription model. The second one would be monthly, uh, one month uh, version. And the uh, other would be a premium annual version. So all the what versions the will be point? annual. What's the price point for all three? The price point would be approximately 60 to 80,000. Uh, this is uh, on the basis of the survey that we have done. Uh, of the 60 to 80,000 on a SaaS model? On the, ba on the basic model for its uh, one year. Which is a competing technology and what are the advantages of that technology versus yours and yours versus the other? Very, very briefly, you know, bullet point. The competing technology is to use just 2D X's. So there are digital, so there are softwares available which can allow surgeon to plan the surgery on basis of only X-ray. So our, our point is to make the X-ray into 3D so that the plan will be more accurate. Okay, it's now up to our judges to give us the results of how you have performed. So we're going to leave our judges for just a moment while they deliberate. Nandini, would you like to start since you're done? This is the lowest I have marked. Largely because you failed to impress upon me the compelling value proposition and on top of it your price points are way off the radar. I think you need to do, you need to go back to the drawing board, need to do one hell of a lot of homework, you know, both in terms of the product and its um, effective use with your customers, which is for the moment orthopedic, uh, you know, surgeon. Not very impressive, I'm so sorry. 48 is what I thought. Omi, would you like to go next, please? Good, because I'm <laughs> on the other side of the scale. Oh, yes. I like the science here. You are able to uh, do some very clever science to do the predictive, uh, uh, not predictive, but the modeling uh, 3D. So uh, my score was 72. 72? As always, I come in in the last, <laughs> you know. And, we always uh, <laughs> save the best for the last, Rajiv. <laughs> but I, I must say that, you know, uh, Nandini's and, you know, mine rating more or less uh, matches. On uh, the highest which you get from me is on relevance and uh, use of science, which is three each. But on disruption, on reach and commercial viability, and on Shunya Quotient, just because of the stage of your, uh, you know, innovation and research, uh, you are at, uh, you rank lower and uh, as a result my total is 48 out of 100. So that's 168 in total from our judges. Let's give them a round of applause anyway. <laughs> the target for you to beat in this episode was 188. Unfortunately, you haven't been able to do that because you haven't. But we anyway wish you luck and thank you so much for presenting to us. So winning this episode at 188 points, uh, Sanket and Sabyasachi. So let's bring them out please. Nandini, if you could just do the honours with the prize. Okay, congratulations. Congratulations. A tablet device for each of you.
Okay, we've got the smiling faces of the winners right here. Smiling camera. Come on, boys. You've won. You've actually won. Well done. But of course, the leaderboard even today is intact. We've got those two scores up there, 204 and 200, that are still to beat. These guys got close, but not quite there. We'll have two teams next week. We're going to be competing again, trying to dazzle us with their innovations and hopefully try to get up there on the leaderboard. Well, thank you so much uh, for watching today, and we hope you will join us next week. This was DuPont Presents The Power of Shunya, Challenge for Zero. Goodbye.